these drugs are so highly effective, Stacy. Uh, and we've seen things in the media that Hep C uh, may be completely eradicated in the future. Is that an attainable goal? Well, I, th I think certainly it's a laudable goal and one that we should all work towards achieving. Uh, but unfortunately, the problem is uh, the patients who are undiagnosed. Um, and, and we need better methods of screening and ensuring that they have uh, the appropriate diagnosis. And then to your point um, as well, Renee, the appropriate um, strat risk stratification uh, and determination of who needs to be treated first. So I, I certainly think it's uh, something that we, we can all work towards, but I think it's probably a little bit farther away than, than uh, we, we hear reported in the media. Very good. Yeah, I think that the end point will, you know, will be a time where hepatitis C is just something that's acquired as a rarity. Um, but like Stacy mentioned, there's 3.2 million uh, hepatitis C patients and half of them aren't diagnosed yet. So vaccination is still very important. We have to keep uh, making sure um, that patients that are coming into your specialty pharmacies have received hepatitis A and hepatitis B um, immunization um, to help at least slow down or mitigate the spread of the disease while we're curing it. As we look at, at hep C as a disease state, what, what, Nick, what are some of the unmet needs that, that you see in this space? So uh, I think the important piece here is as new uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers are entering the space um, is developing and offering the support programs um, that are available today to uh, help manage the patient through the journey of, of receiving or obtaining an SVR. I mean, really, that's the goal and, and, and that's where we need to get to. So um, a new manufacturer, if, if if the AbV product comes out and the patient's going to need ribavirin, then, then it's AbV's uh, responsibility to understand and, and support the patient for not only their product, their antiviral, but also the uh, additional um, medications that will be needed to be treated so that the patient does have an um, optimal chance of obtaining an SVR. Are there any, any clinical unmet needs from, from your perspective? Is there anything more that we can do to help the patient through this journey? Cheryl? Well, I think, you know, helping the patient through the journey is, is the start of it, but then um, at the end of it is, is collecting the SVR. And, you know, there are a, a spattering of collections that are going on, whether it be payer driven, whether it be specialty pharmacy driven, but understanding, you know, these products are in the open distribution space and understanding real world effectiveness. Uh, we'll have to begin to collect these uh, final SVR rates to really measure uh, efficacy. Any employer concerns? Very many employer yeah. concerns in terms of making sure that their patients do successfully complete therapy. I mean, it's it's really that simple, but it's not that simple to achieve. And I believe, you know, the, the patient profiles are very different. And, you know, I think having the, the pharmacies um, that are working with the patients to be able to provide the right support for each patient is going to be important. You know, make sure they understand. You know, I said earlier, understand that this drug could cure this disease for them. So they have to give up 12 weeks of their life, you know, to take it. So they do have to do everything possible to remain compliant and adherent. Any data concerns, Stacy, from this perspective? Well, I, I think as Cheryl alluded to, I think SVR is increasingly important. Both SVR 12 and 24, uh, I think, is important as we get out further um, with more drugs in the channel. Um, but I also think that um, really driving home the importance uh, of the to the patient of adherence, and also um, even though they're sort of one step removed from the cost of these medications really ensuring that they do have good visibility into the fact that somebody is indeed, whether it's their employer or the government or whatever the case may be, somebody is paying a significant amount of money to cure essentially their, their disease. Um, so to have some skin in the game as it relates to, um, to the value proposition. Yeah, yeah there's certainly challenges and I, I think, it, but it's great to have a, a cache of products uh, that gives us an armamentarium of drugs that can actually cure hep C, so that's great. As we look at the oncology space, and we talked a lot about the rising costs and the number of products in the pipeline, Cheryl, what do you see as an unmet need from a specialty pharmacy perspective? I think one of the challenges that, that we have is really um, meeting the needs of the patients in the channel. So we have pharmaceutical manufacturers that do a wonderful job anticipating the challenges in the space. 
uh, we have other manufacturers who um, they're bringing great technologies to us uh, and we're able to treat these patients, but yet patients have needs that aren't being met. And whether those needs arise from financial needs and we need to support patients with copay assistance, with uh, funding assistance, or whether it's ongoing um, compliance support with additional uh, above our core services, some enhanced programs to help meet the needs of these patients. We really need to rely on manufacturers to help support that. Stacy, any unmet needs from your perspective? Absolutely. I think that uh, one of the really key components is real-world outcomes data. And in the oncology space, whether that is overall survival, whether it is progression-free survival, how do we aggregate all of that information um, and report it in a usable manner that we can actually get some real-world outcomes information um, out of that and, and make some further value decisions? Thank you. Nick, from an access and distribution perspective, what, are you, what is your take on unmet oncology needs? So uh, I think as oncology um, continues to um, grow and, and, and really take over specialty pharmacy, um, access is very important and, and taking a look and taking care of the complete patient um, is, is a need that, that needs to continue. The comorbidities are very important, making sure that the patient's compliant during their treatment is a key. Um, and then outcomes, I mean, in oncology, you know, we drive every, every clinical program we put together is, is driven by what outcomes we're going to collect. And in oncology, that's such a challenge um, on, on how do you measure uh, putting those programs together. But I think looking at the whole picture and making sure that the patient gets on medication, gets on medication fast, um, and, and we're able to offer you know, or, or, or lessen the hurdles of the journey is, is the key. I think it's just important um, for the payers to really have a complete understanding of the use of the products, um, the best use for the patients, and then selecting the right tools to uh, achieve appropriate use um, and management and not create barriers. Fantastic. Yeah, the pipeline's certainly robust and the, and the costs are, are, are rising. So I think we're going to have this challenge uh, going forward for quite a while.